Hello everyone! In this video, I will gradually increase the temperature of space from minus 270 degrees Celsius to several thousand degrees above zero. You'll see what happens to the objects in the solar system. All of this will be demonstrated using the Universe Sandbox Simulator. Let's go! So guys, right now I'm next to our planet Earth. And here, in the simulation settings, I can change the background temperature of space. Here it explains in detail what this is. So this is the temperature of the cosmic microwave background. And it's an incredibly cold minus 270 degrees Celsius. Now I will proceed to set the value 10 degrees higher, so let's make it minus 260 degrees Celsius. And here we have the temperature characteristics of the Earth. Look here to see what will change. I'll speed up time to 6 months per second, and overall I see that the Earth's temperature doesn't really change. The average is 7 degrees, the maximum is 29. By the way, I'll explain why the average temperature is 7, it's because the temperature of all the oceans is also taken into account here. But if we judge strictly by the continents, the average there is 15 degrees, so there's really no change. Let's try increasing it by another 10 degrees, so now it will be minus 250 degrees. That's the temperature of space. And in this case, it actually gets close to 8 degrees Celsius, so there is some effect, even if it's small, but it's there. Well, of course, if you cover the atmosphere with clouds, you can't really see anything here the changes so far are very minimal. So I'll probably just go ahead and set it to minus 200 degrees right away. That's the full temperature of space. After waiting a little while, the temperature reached 9 degrees Celsius. So what's so interesting about Pluto here? Well, same here. The temperature hasn't really increased much, even though it's minus 212 degrees at the equator. But since there aren't any significant changes, let's try doubling the temperature. Now it will be minus 100 degrees Celsius. That's the temperature of space. And yes, we can immediately see the effect on the temperature. It's already minus 170 degrees on Pluto. Half a year passes in a second. And now we can see that some kind of atmosphere is starting to appear. We can see clouds. And there's this interesting orange silhouette. It looks interesting. Honestly. Minus 155. Meanwhile, wow, just look at that. What a truly interesting visual spectacle. It's just incredible. I like it. It's pleasing to the eye, but the conditions there on Pluto are probably harsh. Anyway, it's getting even more yellow. Wow. And as more time passes, it gradually starts to take on distinct reddish hues. And then later, some noticeable bluish shades as well. So overall, that's how it ended up looking. Interesting release of gases. We saw it. And now the temperature is approaching minus 100 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look at the surface. Well, basically nothing has changed here. Whoa. And did you see the atmosphere has become very harsh, very dense. So what's happening on our planet Earth? Here, I see the temperature has stabilized, and it's about 40 degrees Celsius. That's the average surface temperature. If we remove the atmospheric clouds, we can see that the ice in the Arctic Ocean has receded quite a lot. And some regions have been flooded here as well. And also in Antarctica, as we can see, the ice has melted too. But it still exists for now. There is still life on the planet, although there are now many more desert regions. And here, as we can see, there are already places along the equator where life is disappearing, because it's extremely hot there. And I also thought, let's take a look at the habitability of the sun as a star. Does it shift when I increase the temperature of space? But as you can see, it doesn't. Everything is fine, so the simulator doesn't take that into account. I thought Mars would be affected and it would heat up, but no, it didn't really get much warmer. The maximum temperature is still as low as minus 35 degrees. So, let's go back to Earth, and now I'll set the background temperature of space. Well, how much should it be? Let's set it to 0 degrees Celsius. That will probably be pretty extreme. Alright, the value is set. And as we can see, life on Earth disappeared instantly, because the average temperature is already 100 degrees Celsius. Let's take a look over here. Antarctica has almost completely melted, and we can see that water is already starting to disappear at the equator. Here, you can clearly see how it's vanishing, and the average temperature is already 170 degrees. Wow, oh my, all the seas here have dried up, only the oceans are left and just a little bit of ice, while Antarctica, as we can see, has already completely melted, just a tiny bit remains. There's only a bit of ice left at the very edge of the pole. And that's it, that's all. There is no ice left in the Arctic Ocean. And here, water appears and then disappears. But this is most likely due to the change of seasons. And the average temperature has settled at 173 degrees. Oh, if you display the atmosphere, the Earth here has already turned into a second Venus. A lot of water vapor has entered and created this haze on Earth, so you can't see anything at all. And with Mars, by the way, it turned out to be very interesting. The average temperature is 57 degrees and there are no places with 100 degrees. Anywhere. 
and this ice in the northern hemisphere of Mars has melted and formed this kind of ocean. It's not very deep to be honest, but there is something, some kind of liquid. And in the southern hemisphere, there are even moments when vegetation manages to exist here. Wow, and the vegetation appears and disappears with the changing seasons. So, as we can see, it's not there all year round. And if you display the atmosphere in principle, it already looks quite dense. Well, the pressure here is 0.48 atmospheres. And it seems to be gradually increasing, most likely over time that water will completely evaporate and make the atmosphere even more saturated. Well, it's already at 0.49 atmospheres. And now there's a probability of life? 3.5%. I wonder what's happening with the gas giants. Here's Jupiter, and it's about 2 degrees Celsius there. And here you go guys, Jupiter's moon Europa. It has acquired water. And now it's an ocean moon. Incredible. Here, the average temperature is 54 degrees Celsius. The temperature is actually quite even all over the entire moon. Let's take a closer look at the surface, and we can clearly see that almost everything here is completely flooded. Only a few islands remain. So basically, to put it simply, it's really an ocean moon. The probability of life is hardly more than 5%. And here is Ganymede as well, as we can see, also an ocean moon. With a surface temperature of 94 degrees, we can see everything here is underwater. There aren't even any islands visible here at all. Well, and Callisto looks like a second Venus. If we look at the surface to see what's happening there and highlight it, there's no liquid here. The temperature is 214 degrees. And even in positive temperatures, there's no sign of liquid. This moon has overheated too much, and Io is Io. The average temperature is just over 1 degree, so it hasn't warmed up. With its atmosphere, this is what it looks like from the outside. And now, friends, can you guess which moon this is? When we got near Saturn, I was just amazed. It's incredible. Here is its realistic lighting. Well, let's brighten it up so everything is clearly visible. So guys, this is Enceladus. It has a temperature of 33 degrees Celsius. If we look for an atmosphere or clouds, we can see bodies of water here. There are actually a lot of bodies of water, and there is land too, but no life. There is no vegetation here. But an atmosphere has appeared, which is of course interesting. However, it probably won't last long here because this moon is very light. Now, let's take a look at Titan and its atmosphere has changed. It has become more white in tone. It's 145 degrees Celsius here. That's quite a lot. It's really heated up. If you look at the surface, basically, there aren't any major changes here. Well, those methane lakes that were here before are gone. Everything has gone into the atmosphere. And here is Pluto. As you can see, it's losing its material, forming active tails. The temperature is 52 degrees. Not particularly high, but as we can see, the atmosphere here is still dense. If you look at the surface, we have another vast ocean planet here, with only a few small scattered islands remaining. I'll also show you the distant dwarf planet Eris. It's approximately 0 degrees Celsius here, a truly frigid and desolate environment. Basically, just as I said, the temperature of space and there's no atmosphere here at all. Just a rocky world like this. In a nutshell, that's Mercury. It's 175 degrees here and nothing seems to have changed. And Venus looks unusual. There's this red glow coming from the atmosphere, especially if you look at it like this. But overall, it's just gotten warmer here, 803 degrees Celsius and the surface glows like this. That's probably why you observe that distinct reddish color within the atmosphere. Now, next to Vedera, I will gradually increase the temperature of the surrounding space and precisely set it to 250 degrees Celsius. This adjustment is crucial for our experiment. And now six months are passing per second and some incredible things are happening with Vedera. The temperature is 1700 degrees. Wow. We can say that the temperature has stabilized now. A temperature of exactly 17 to 20 degrees Celsius. What's happening on the surface? Oh, everything has melted. Well, that's pretty clear, of course. Earth still looks like this, with a dense atmosphere and a temperature of 466 degrees. Apparently, everything here is also starting to get extremely hot on the surface. Mars looks like this, with a temperature of 326 degrees. And as I understand it, it has already lost all its water. There's no water left anywhere, and certainly no life. Well, and Europa, guys, that's it. It's lost all its liquid water, too. The temperature here is already 250 degrees, and that's everywhere. All across Europa's surface. Now we're near Enceladus. Here it's warmed up to 318 degrees. We can see there's no water left on the surface, either. Things are looking grim here, as well. And Pluto, that's it. It's lost its entire atmosphere. Its temperature is now the same as the temperature of space, 250 degrees. I've returned to Earth, and now I'm going to increase the temperature of space doubling it again. Now it's 500 degrees Celsius, 
Well, as we can see, the temperature on Earth has risen to 850 degrees Celsius. So, what's happening on the surface? Oh, things are really extreme here now. Everything is melting, everything is magma, all of that. Even if you look at it like this, you can see these hot objects. Uh, now, all the objects in the solar system will be this hot. Because space itself is now starting to heat them up very effectively. That's why Venus is incredible. Our planet Venus looks like a giant comet with a hot tail. The temperature is 2681 degrees. And this is how it looks without its atmosphere and clouds. If you turn on the display, then of course everything here is extremely intense. I'm curious guys to take a look at the most distant object in the solar system. Well, in our case here, that's Sedna. And here we can see it's exactly 500 degrees. Basically, that's basically the temperature I set for the space. It's heating everything here with its warmth, so to speak. And now I'll set the temperature of the vast expanse of space to a thousand degrees Celsius and quite unbelievably space just dramatically lit up. Look closely. Now everything everywhere has completely turned a vivid red. This is just absolutely insane. Space itself is incredibly overheated. Even if I show it to you like this, it just looks epic. There's never been anything like this on my channel before. I'm curious about the sun, whether it is affected in any way. Let's take a look. Half a year passes in a second, and as we can see, the temperature has only changed by one degree. It seems like it only increased by that much. So basically, the sun isn't affected. Let's briefly check what's happening with Earth. 1630 degrees Celsius and an incredibly molten surface. And on Venus, it's 3643 degrees. Basically guys, the point is clear. All the objects are burning, that's obvious. But what's still interesting is what if we set the temperature of space, say, to 5000 degrees? How would that change the visuals? Oh wow, look how incredibly wide it is, just absolutely incredible. Alright, let's go ahead and set it to 2500 degrees. Now everything shifts more towards yellow tones. Alright, so I guess if I set it to 10,000 degrees it'll turn blue, right? Yes. If I set it to 20,000 degrees, this is how it looks. There's one more interesting thing left, how it affects the sun. Here we have the sun and you can barely see it. I'll set it to something more informative here. Maybe we'll be able to see something. There, now we can see something, that's good. And half a year passes in a second. Alright, when you significantly raise the background temperature of space like this, even the star here starts to heat up considerably. It's already at 15,000 degrees Celsius. And now the temperature has settled at 20,000 degrees. Incredible. But at the same time I see that everything is fine with the mass and radius. What is this, guys? Earth is barely visible, there's no atmosphere, 20,000 degrees, up to it. Oh, I don't understand anything. Basically, it should have burned up there, really. I see that Jupiter and Saturn have disappeared somewhere. They're not visible at all. Alright, let's find out one more thing. How much can I increase the temperature of space? So let's say another 10 times. That's 200,000 degrees Celsius. It's another 10 times. That makes it 2 million degrees Celsius. Yeah, look, I can keep increasing it and increasing it. Oh, wow, now everything's just... The sun has disappeared as I understand it. The sun just vanished and now all the planets and satellites are starting to just fly apart. Well, basically the simulator here lets you play around with this temperature to unbelievable values. There, that's it. It seems like it won't let me increase the temperature any further. This is of course totally insane. I truly don't understand how Earth even possibly exists here because the ambient temperature is just absolutely unbelievable. It's just unrealistic. I guess the simulator decided to somehow preserve the Earth. Anyway, I'll set the background temperature of space back to the reasonable values it had before. And now you can see what Earth looked like back then. Alright, I'll start the time. Here, it'll be 15. Minutes will pass per second. So basically, guys, that's the result of this experiment. If you found this video truly interesting, please do leave a like and also write in the comments what specific thoughts you had after watching this video. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again in the universe.